Hello everyone, I am back to give you a preview of the NOAA European Navigation 2011 shows. I will be attending both these shows. These will actually be the first non-WWE live events I've ever been to. So I'm really looking forward to that. Both these shows look really good. Just to show you the tickets for both shows and for the meet and greet on night two. Meet and greet, even though I'm sure most guys can't speak, can't speak English. Bizarre. Um, the thing about these shows is um, that kind of holds them back from you know being truly amazing shows. And I only discovered this a while ago. Um, Noah's actually going to use this footage as part of their you know syndicated television. So because of that, uh, Mark Sloan and the rest of the UK organizers basically have to comply with Noah continuity. And the biggest consequence of that is they cannot book matches that Noah would normally want to build up and treat as important. You know, I thought we would get Kenta Nakajima or something along those lines. We can't get that because um, Noah would ordinarily put a lot of build up behind a match like that. So, you know, it kind of sucks, but I think they've done very well with the limitations that they have to put together a good set of cards. I'm not going to go through every match. I cannot do that because... I'm just not familiar with the British talent in any way, shape, or form. Um, the only guy I've even seen before is Zack Sabre Jr. So I'm going to go through this by the wrestlers and not by the matches. I think it'll just be a much easier way of doing this and a much um, better way of getting my point out there. Um, and let's go ahead and start with Sabre. I would say that apart from the obvious appeal of seeing the Japanese talent in the UK for the first time since 2008, what's going to be newsworthy this weekend is Zack Sabre Jr. This guy has been given an unmistakable opportunity to go out there and make his name on this weekend. You can tell that they haven't booked him just to get him on the cards. They've booked him to show Noah, in no uncertain terms, what this guy can do. You know, Sabre's been getting a lot of attention because he's been appearing, you know, prominently uh, in CZW, in Evolve, I believe, and of course in WXW. Um, and here he'll be facing, on night one, he'll be facing Nakajima, and on night two he'll be facing Kenta. This is his weekend, I would say. And if he delivers, that's what these shows would be remembered for, I think, you know. I know all this I know all this makes it sound like I think he's some prodigy of a talent. I've only seen him in one great performance against Daley Richards, and I well it was definitely his qualities that made that match great in my opinion. You know, he wasn't a phenomenon by any means. Um I think some of what he did was kind of sloppy, but he did bring the emotion to what he was doing. I definitely think he he delivered on that score. And you know, to me, if you bring the emotion to what you're doing, that can be that can more than make up for good techniques. So I'm looking forward to seeing what he can do. If he can have a great match with Davey Richards, he can definitely have a great match with Nakajima or Kenta. I, well, I'm not really sure if it's fair to expect two great performances back to back, but you know, in some ways that's the key to having to leaving an impression just this one time when you're a guy in Sabre's position. So I'm looking forward to seeing what happens there. I really think it could be something special if everything delivers up to par. I'm definitely looking forward to that. Um, then, of course, we have Segura, the GHT champion. Just really looking forward to seeing him live. I mean, the matches that he's in on these shows, they're not really the sort of matches that, you know, make you really excited in advance. But they could definitely still surprise you. I mean, Night One is facing Dave Mastiff, big UK heavyweight guy. I've only seen him in YouTube clips. I really cannot judge. But, you know, it could be a really great slugfest. I mean, I'm sure it'll be a sight to see live, even though it won't match up to any of... Well, not any, but it won't match up to some of Segura's... 2010 matches and I know nothing at all about Mastiff so you know it could turn out to be a wonderful surprise I'm I'm intrigued is all I can say I am definitely intrigued and then night two he'll be facing Suzuki Katalo um, who Noah have pushed as their top junior so far this year I've never liked the guy I still don't like the guy but the Nakajima match does show that he can be capable of something special in the right circumstances and you know Segura could be that guy because Segura is essentially a big junior. You know, right now I guess you'd call him a small heavyweight, but for most of his career he's been a junior. And if he can add substance to those parts of the match where Suzuki just hardly ever delivers on, in my opinion, then it could be really, really good, definitely. So I mean, I'm sure, I'm sure live you can kind of just, um, just let everything go and just enjoy yourself. So you know, I'm looking forward to seeing it. I'm looking forward to seeing Segura live full stop. So um, good stuff there. Okay, so next we've got Shiozaki Go. Uh, you know, I'm not one to say that Shiozaki is the future of No or anything because it's only ever so often that the guy comes out with this amazing baby face performance that just gets you so captivated into his matches. 
I mean, when it does happen, it's really something amazing. I mean, it can be really, really special. Um, I mean, Shiazaki versus Kensuke, no one loved that match more than I did, you know. You never really know when it's going to happen, but, you know, I think it could happen on at least one of the matches this weekend. I mean, the first night he'll be facing, he'll be um, teaming with Tanaguchi Shuhei to fa take on Kenta and Bobby Fish. Um, Noah have been teaming Shiazaki and Tanaguchi together lately. It's a bit of a strange team, I think, you know, because you've got Tanaguchi, who's unquestionably mid-card, who can have a good performance one night and then just have an okay performance the next night. And then there's Shiazaki, who one might consider a Noah main eventer, who's held the championship before, but still really isn't a money maker. And I still, I don't think, has the presence of a Kensuke or a Takayama, certainly not a Kobashi. So it's a strange pairing. You're not really sure who it's helping. Um, but the match itself will probably be fun, at least. You know, she is lucky in Kenta sounds like good chemistry to me. Um, it's hard to predict how that'll go because I don't think that's happened in a long time. But what what I'm really interested in, definitely, is night two. She is lucky will be facing Nakajima. This, I think, could be really, really special. This could very easily be the match of the weekend, in my opinion. You know, you've got Kobashi's protege against Kensuke's protege. And what I want to know is who has learned the most since the classic 2005 tag match? Who has progressed the furthest? You know, common sense would say that Chiyazaki has because he's a former champion. And as I said, this is our guy. And so Nakajima can make an impression, definitely, by getting a lot of offense in. That's how you imagine the match would go anyway because Shiyazaki is the heavyweight and Nakajima is still wrestling as a junior. So I'm really looking forward to this one. Could very well be the match of the weekend. You know, the Sabre stuff might be a little more memorable if everything delivers above and beyond. But I'm really looking forward to seeing Shiyazaki and Nakajima. That's chem that to me is the best chemistry we've got on this whole weekend. So really looking forward to it. And lastly, I want to mention more Shima. He'll be at the shows to replace the injured Marufuji. Um, it sucks for Marufuji that he keeps getting injured, but you know I think Morishima is the best replacement possible. You know I think Akiyama is on a New Japan card this weekend, so Morishima is the next best thing. Well, next best thing simply because apparently there was too high a price tag for them to bring over Kensuke or Takayama. You know Mark Stone even said that if they wanted to bring over Kensuke, they'd have to trim the roster by a lot. So. You know, it is what it is. But Morishima, looking forward to seeing him live. He'll be a sight to see live just because of, you know, his mass. And, you know, first night, he'll be facing the Kings of Wrestling on both nights, each time with a different partner. First night, he'll be teaming with AOP. AOP. Um, it's going to be interesting to see the big heavyweight teaming up with, the, with one of the most fiery juniors that Noah have on their roster. So, looking forward to that. And then on the second night, he'll be teaming up with Tanaguchi to, you know, take on the Kings once again. So a lot of good interactions for Hero and Claudio to deliver on here. They'll be locking horns with a big heavyweight, a junior, and a guy that's neither here nor there in Tanaguchi. Um, should be should be two great matches. It should be a great weekend overall. You know, I'm sure it'll be very enjoyable. I don't know if I'll be getting live reviews of the shows while I'm over there. If it isn't already obvious, my, my camera is built into my laptop and I can't bring my laptop over there because I only allowed one piece of cabin baggage. Uh, maybe someone else have a, maybe someone else will have a camera, you know, like Daniel talks progress. And if we don't do a video over there, I'll certainly have some live thoughts um, when I get back home. So that is that. Any of you Americans that are going to see New Japan live this weekend, do enjoy yourselves. I will talk to you all later.